It's really changed. Because I'm the chief of police here. Or members of the Eli Whitney Trades. But at an honest mob in my back. For YTV. For YTV. For YTV. For YTV. This is your Yale Week. Hello and welcome to your Yale Week. I'm Peter Chung and here are this week's top stories. On Sunday, the Dwight Hall Socially Responsible Investment Fund filed a shareholder resolution calling on ExxonMobil to publicly report its undisclosed lobbying expenditures, which are suspected to have been used to downplay the threat of climate change by lobbying against the scientific community. In 2014, the Dwight Hall Group invested $2,000 in Exxon in order to test whether the company would reveal its expenditures. Members of the team said that they expect that Exxon will vote the resolution down. If this were to happen, it might prompt Yale to divest from the company, since it is against the guidelines of the university's investment rules to invest in corporations where shareholder engagement fails. On Wednesday, the Yale College Council announced that R&B singer-songwriter Janelle Monae will headline this year's Spring Fling. Monet, the first black female artist to headline the annual performance, will be joined by opener Vince Staples, a critically acclaimed rapper from Long Beach, California, and Canadian DJ and record producer A-Track. And finally, our top story. Tuesday, the Graduate Student Assembly and faculty discussed the problems of diversity and retention in the faculty of Yale. For more on that, we'll be sitting down with Victor Wang. But first, for a quick look at next week, Wayne Zhang. Thanks, Peter. Come cheer on our Bulldog sports teams at home. On Friday, women's ice hockey faces Brown at 3 p.m. and men's ice hockey faces Union University at 7 p.m. Saturday, men's and women's fencing face Sacred Heart at 12 p.m., gymnastics has an invitational at 1 p.m., and men's and women's squash face Middlebury, Navy, and Williams at 12 p.m. Friday and Saturday, Yale Department of Philosophy and Whitney Humanities Center will be hosting Ideology, a free conference bringing together esteemed scholars to discuss philosophy. The conference will be held in Sterling Memorial Library. Additionally, this Saturday at 2 p.m. there will be a screening of The Black Panthers, Vanguard of the Revolution, a feature-length documentary exploring the Black Panther Party and its significance in broader American and Black culture. The screening is free to the general public and will feature a panel with director Stanley Nelson and Dean Jonathan Holloway, among others. Finally, don't forget to pick up your copy of Weekend. Weekend's Aparna Nathan and Daniela Briganti analyze how CS50 and other changes in the computer science department are changing what it means to be a woman that codes. Back to you, Peter. Hello, we're sitting down with Victor Wang, who's the beat reporter for academics. So Victor, you reported on this past Tuesday's conference between administrators and graduate students on the Faculty Diversity Initiative. And I know a lot of us, when we think about faculty diversity, think about the $50 million that President Peter Salovey announced back in November. How is this discussion related to that $50 million? It's definitely a big part of the discussion. I know many of the graduate students were there because they wanted to know more about what the $50 million initiative is going to and how it's going to help um, solve systemic problems in terms of faculty diversity on campus. But I think it also, it also kind of talks about a larger issue that we kind of tackled, the entire university was part of during um, recent uh, campus events about race that happened this fall. So is faculty diversity a big problem at Yale? How does it compare to its peer institutions? Um, I think it's definitely a problem, and I think the administrators yesterday talked about this in a very frank way. Um, they also brought statistics that back, back this up. Um, for example, there hasn't been much increase in the, number, in the percentage of minority faculty in the FAS ladder, and there's, there's still like a very significant gender gap in the same ladder system. Um, and I also think there's a big issue in terms of retention of diverse faculty and faculty studying um, subjects like ethnic studies. Um, and we've seen anecdotal stories of um, a few professors leaving to Columbia. And this is definitely a trend that needs to stop in terms of um, how we're going to solve diversity issues at Yale. So how is the latter related to retention problems? Um, so yeah, so the latter system, so the first part of the talk was really about dissecting how the ladder system works and Yale has a very interesting tenure system um, um, and I think there's lots of attrition uh, across uh, across eight years, around eight years, um, during which the, the faculty member goes from assistant professor to an associate professor and then to a full professorship and a lot of times they kind of leave at the associate level um, to uh, other places who might be offering them tenure earlier and offering them more attractive packages and there's also an issue about um, get, gaining a critical mass of diverse faculty and faculty studying these issues 
because if you, you want to go to a place where there are other people are already studying these kind of things and you want to feel like you're a part of a discussion. So is the $50 million probably going to go towards creating faster tenured positions or, or more money at least for associate pr professorships? Um, so I think it, it's going to go broadly towards um, the, faculty, the FAS ladder faculty and creating more, creating and sustaining more diverse faculty positions. That's my understanding of it, at least. I think the plans are still not exactly clear cut, um, but I think that would definitely, uh, that's definitely a way to create a critical mass of diverse faculty. Thank you very much for joining us, Victor. Make sure to check out Victor's story that was published this past Tuesday on faculty diversity. And from all of us here at YTV, have a great weekend. And with me is the captain of the Yale gymnastics team, Camilla Opperman. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So, looking back at last season, uh, the team had its best score at the ECAC championship since 2003. Can you talk about a little bit about what last season was?